Welcome everyone to some more new campaign trail. Haven't played this game for a while. If you're new to the channel or you're just new to these videos, basically what it is, is this is a free to play game. It's a website. I'll put the link down in the description. You can check it out where you get to take on the role of a candidate in an election and through a series of questions that all relate to the events that were going on at the time and the, the issues that mattered to the people who were voting you make decisions and then you see if you win it's a lot of fun but it's also a really good way to learn the history of what was going on what mattered to people at that time uh, stuff that you don't necessarily read about in history books and we've done a number of these over time trying to recreate different elections and see what would happen and i'll put links down in the description to some of the other ones that i've done as well as a playlist up at the end so you can check it out we're going to do something a little different today though we're not doing a u.s presidential election uh, this is in their mod loader where you can load mods that are in addition to the regular uh, campaigns that are available and this one is declaration 1776 and what happens in this one is that we are taking on the role of John Adams, who is one of the primary movers behind the, the move for independence. He represents Massachusetts, which is where the uh, war for independence begins. And by 1776, it's obvious that the king is not going to back down and that they're going to have to push for full independence instead of trying to reconcile with the British government. And so John Adams uh, and others who are in favor of independence have to go about the job of wooing the other delegates in the other states uh, because some of these delegates didn't feel that they could on their own vote for independence. So they waited for instructions from the colonial assembly or the state assembly back home new york was a prime example of this where they would vote and then they would instruct their delegates how to vote and the point was that they needed this to be unanimous they felt that the only way that it had any chance of going forward is if uh if they all vote together the way john adams says it and i don't know if he really said this but in the tv series john adams he said all every clock must strike at the same second uh, and so what ends up happening in real life is that you get 12 in favor of independence and one abstention, which was New York, because they hadn't received instructions on how they were to vote. Uh, so it wasn't real clear it was going to go that way. So I, I think we're going to have the job, I haven't played this yet, of being John Adams and trying to woo all the different colonies into voting for independence. So uh, in the summer of 1776, the freedom of all succeeding generations of the American country was defined and defended. Paralyzed by the enormous winds of change and branded traitors by the crown, the representatives of the Continental Congress meet for their second session in the city of Philadelphia, the threat of death and disgrace looming. At the center of the small cadre of activists stands the most brilliant, if stubborn and obnoxious, accurate politician of the day, John Adams. With Massachusetts brutalized by redcoat occupation, he now moves to convince the Congress to adopt the most bold, frightening resolution, independence. So here we go. We are John Adams. John Adams is no Samuel. Uh, John Adams, is a, he's, he's kind of a firebrand, but he's not a radical like a guy like Samuel Adams is. He, he doesn't resort to kind of the basest of human nature. He tries to be an intellectual. He's the guy who defends the British soldiers who are on trial for murder from the Boston Massacre and gets most of them off with pretty light penalties. So he's a patriot, but he kind of considers himself a more reasonable patriot. But at the same time, he's very outspoken. He rubs people the wrong way sometimes because he's not real gracious in his manners. Uh, if he believes in something, he will let you know it. And he's not really good at being a politician in that sense. Uh, so we'll have to balance his fire and his oratory skills with the need to woo some people in a more subtle way in some cases. Uh, so here we go. So uh, in this game, you have your electoral map. In this case, what we're dealing with are pro-independency, and that is the way they refer to it as independency. Uh, oh, we got some music going here. I have it turned down pretty low, though. 
um, pro-independency or anti-independency. And so we need to get all of them pro. And in each state or colony, we're going to have what matters to them and how they stand on different issues. Of course, each one has one vote in this, and we need to get them all. Uh, so New England is is going to be very pro-independence because that's where it all started. Uh, it's about wooing the middle and southern states to the cause. Georgia is in favor as well. Uh, although you can see South Carolina and Pennsylvania especially are strongly opposed. That's absolutely true. Two of the most outspoken delegates at the assembly, uh, Edward Rutledge and um, trying to remember the other guy's name from Pennsylvania, but uh, were very, very outspoken. Dickinson was the guy's name from Pennsylvania uh, against independence, but they did come around eventually. Well, Dickinson didn't, but then he actually enlisted <laughs> after that anyway. Uh, so we've got to see what we need to do to make this happen. Um, Britain lay siege to Boston, intent on making an example of the agitating city with the colony's request for peace having been ignored. He's talking about the Olive Branch petition, which was sent to the king asking for him to kind of reconcile. Um, as you depart Braintree, how will you spend your final moments at home? Um, I feel, let's see. While in Philadelphia, I found time for a draper's shop and bought Abigail an outfit I had confidence would charm her. Before my departure, I will present her this fine gift. Uh, address the citizenry. I don't think we need to address the citizenry of Braintree, uh, which is now called Quincy, Massachusetts, because they're already in favor, so there's nothing to be gained by that. Um, let's buy her a gift. Yeah, let's do that. The silk camlet mantua uh, of a pretty blue color becomes Abigail, and she promises to write to you with a smile you know will inspire your heart to twist with longing once you are returned to Congress. Lord knows you'll miss her dearly. Abigail Adams was a brilliant woman, and her letters to John went a long way. I mean, she was very outspoken in her opinions, uh, and she really had a lot of input into his thinking, uh, and he trusted her opinion a great deal. Okay, um, your name is Isaac Center. Oh, so we're actually answering questions for different people, it looks like. Uh, a surgeon from the colony of Rhode Island in the regiment of Colonel Benedict Arnold. The March North has been a trying affair. So we're talking about the March North. Um, are we talking about going up into Quebec, Canada? What will you write? Um, a brisk cannonade the most of the day upon a party of Captain Morgan's riflemen who were stationed upon the St. Charles River by the nunnery, wounded one Sergeant Dixon the, that his leg was amputated, no other harm. Um, I think we're going to go with the first one, which is all about uh, just inspiring people to the cause. The castle and heifer was slain and divided accordingly, each man restricted to an one X pound of beef. Um, I don't know what any of that means for anything, but we'll see. Uh, so New York's kind of right on the fence. They're a little bit anti. Pennsylvania and South Carolina are the ones we're going to have to really convince. Um, one is planter class. The other one is somewhat urban. So, I mean, they're very different. Uh, the waning Continental Army prepares for its assault on Quebec City. You notice that General Montgomery was anxious prior to the charge. He was killed in this charge. In fact, they referenced that in the musical Hamilton when Aaron Burr says, I, w I, uh, I was a soldier under General Montgomery who ca uh, caught a bullet in the neck in Quebec. Well, in summary, uh, he didn't actually catch a bullet in the neck. I think he had part of his face blown off. Um While fireballs rain down on where the British suppose your army makes it headquarters, you find yourself racked by duty. What course will you take as this great crucible progresses? Stand my post as a surgeon, as Colonel Arnold had said. I cannot consent. You should take up arms. Yeah. Uh, you stay loyal to the colonel's order, notwithstanding your desire to fight. Later, the colonel was brought in, supported by two soldiers wounded in the leg. You easily discover the bullet and extract it, and later aid in the colonel and Major Ogden's hidden retreat from the city. Okay, so back to Adams now. For a half a year, the Continental Army, under the command of General Washington, has struggled. So this is interesting. Um, so we're already past. John Adams was the one who actually makes the motion to name uh, Washington, who was a delegate to the Continental Congress, to name him as Commander-in-Chief of the Army. It was a brilliant move. 
because at this point the revolution is pretty much confined to the north, to New England, and by naming a Virginian to command it, he kind of makes it an all of the colonies affair at that point. Uh, and Virginia is the, the, the biggest of the states. It's very influential. So this was a big deal. So the choice is here. Uh, what course will you advocate as wa Washington's strongest ally in the chamber? Uh, Adams was constantly railing on the Continental Congress to make sure that they were equipping his army and feeding his army and paying his army, which was a struggle throughout the entire war. Um, for all intents and purposes, the army is still primarily a force of New England militias. All our colonies must be bound together in this cause, lest we forget, gentlemen, what is at stake. Um, the army has muskets, but not the powder or the bullets to fire them. Uh, I'm going to go for the third option here. John Dickinson, that's the guy I mentioned earlier, of Pennsylvania, your chief rival in the Congress, is quick to denounce the idea of furthering the responsibility of the Congress, but the noise that accompanies his words are noticeably less than in the previous year. All right, so... Have we affected anything yet? Not really. I think it'll probably take a few turns before we start to see any kind of an impact. Late in March, word arrives in Philadelphia the Redcoats have broken their cannons and fled Boston. So that actually did happen. Um, Washington's army is able to surround Boston with a bunch of cannon they take from Fort Ticonderoga and bring over the mountains and pretty much seemingly overnight set them up, uh, up on places like Dorchester Heights. The British realize they can't hold the position in Boston, uh, but they're in a difficult situation because Washington could fire on them. Uh, and so they threaten to burn the city of Boston on their way out. And so they negotiate with Washington. That he'll allow them to withdraw from the city if in return they don't torch it on the way out. Uh, and he knows they're going to come back. So they flee. They kind of rally. They form a big mass of force. And then they come and show up at Long Island and they land. Uh, in New York City right about the time that, uh, well, they land later, but they show up in New York City right about the time that independence is being voted on. Okay, uh, for one worship, the royal governor of Virginia, the Lord Dunmore, has issued a most stirring proclamation that any enslaved man who takes up arms against America will be afforded their freedom. How does your faction react? Now, this has got to be, we've got to be careful here because it would be easy for me to vote the way that my heart tells me to, which is to support anything that's going to emancipate slaves. But that is not how we're going to win states like South Carolina to the cause of independence, unfortunately. We must be very delicate with this issue to avoid any undue scandal with our friends from Virginia and the other states. Um, I could denounce it in strong terms, but I think that would probably hurt me with Pennsylvania. Uh... I could say, if it comes, it should be by the consenting governments of the independent states. I think maybe I'll do that, because that might please both. Talk of emancipation unsettles your southern friends, but your boldness has earned the admiration of Mr. Jefferson, Jefferson, who paradoxically opposes slavery, even though he owns a whole bunch of them. Uh, so, mm, looks like I hurt myself in North Carolina. Virginia's on the fence. Really didn't do anything to gain any votes with Pennsylvania. Okay. A 47-page pamphlet from an anonymous emigre with this, uh, let's see, nothing more than simple facts, common sense. So this is uh, by Thomas Paine. Uh, what are your thoughts? What are the thoughts of your patriots? So common sense was huge and really swayed a lot of people's opinions. We absolutely have to support this. Um Yeah, we're definitely going to support this. Um, we have to publish it. We have to get it out to the people. While the peoples of America are warming themselves to the ideas written out in this pamphlet, the country is still three-fourths Tory loyalist and four-fifths indifferent to the revolution. And the political class in Philadelphia, well, they are not at all ready for something like this, John. So they're saying it didn't help a lot. So uh, it looks like Virginia is pro-independence. So is... New Jersey slightly. Man, it's going to be tough. On May Day this year, Philadelphians will vote either to elect an independence ticket to the colony's assembly or maintain the status quo. Uh, 
perhaps Dr. Franklin could be of help reversing the course of the Quakers' present unhappiness. I would lean on Benjamin Franklin in this one. He was a practical guy. He was definitely pro-independence, but he knew how to kind of read the tea leaves, so to speak, and and get people on board. Uh, We're going to rely on him on this one. Dr. Franklin is a political chameleon and no less so in his religious beliefs. He has been claimed by the Presbyterians, Anglicans, and the Quakers, and you suspect he may be a deist. So deists were, deism was pretty popular among many of the founding fathers. Uh, It was a belief in God, but it was a belief in a God who set the world in motion, who created everything, but then was basically hands off. Uh, They talked a lot about providence, which was the idea of God intervening in the natural world, not in supernatural ways. So Thomas Jefferson, for example, who was definitely a deist, believed in God, but was not about the supernatural and miracles and things like that. And he had his own version of the Bible where he cut out all the parts that had miracles in it and just was left with what was natural. Uh, So that's what a deist would be here. Um, So I don't know how that affected things at all. We're still 65% anti in Pennsylvania. Things are moving slowly. Okay, so the coming General Assembly elections here in Philadelphia will be a crucial test of the electoral effectiveness of your independence movement. Uh, So, Dutch immigrant vote, no. As troubling as it is to admit the way to victory in Pennsylvania is through conservative elements and the Quakers. We must keep trying. There's a lot of German immigrants in Pennsylvania too, though. So it's not just about the Quakers by this point. A lot of Germans. Um, We must make constant and vigorous reminders to the people of Philadelphia to the full extent of British crimes against the colonies. I think I'll go that route. I might pay for it. Your campaign shakes the pleasant scenes of domestic life from the peoples of Philadelphia for better or worse. So it hasn't really changed there. I guess we'll see when the actual vote comes in. Uh, when the May Day elections to the General Assembly were mere days away, Philadelphia is abuzz with word that a large grouping of British men of war have been spotted sailing up the Delaware. What purpose can they have, voters fear, but the destruction of the Congress and stamping out of independence? Um, Congress must be empowered with the means to defend itself, which is why the voters of this province must elect the independence ticket. Yeah, I think we'll do that. It is revealed by later reports that the sighting was overblown, having only in truth been two ships on routine patrols. Okay, but what does that mean for things? North Carolina is starting to come back our way, I think. It is the May Day elections. Here we go. And Samuel tells you that the during the vote there was a fracas inspired by the Dutch, wherein they chased a Tory named Joseph Swift away from the polls. Such a disturbance, he assures you, could dissuade other voters of that side from arriving. However, the events turn sour when the Philadelphia sheriff, a noted Tory, decides to shut the state house doors at 6 p.m. with voters still arriving. All right. um, Have your Sons of Liberty do what they must to ensure the vote is counted. Yeah, let's do that. At the behest of the Sons, the workers refuse to disperse and harangue the sheriff until he is forced to open the doors again and let them vote. The independence voters will sleep tonight determined that a new day in America will arrive in the morn. Here we go. You are oh, Now I'm Samuel Adams. So what happened in Pennsylvania? Still nothing. We don't really know what's happening there. Sam Adams is a, is a tough cookie here because he, uh, he was m- much more on the radical end of the independence movement. Uh, despite all your hopes, the independence ticket has failed in yesterday's elections. In a series of secret meetings that will scarcely be recorded, you meet with your allies in Philadelphia to accumulate theories as to why you're defeated and deliberate on the future. What is the way forward? Um, put the squeeze on the government. I don't think we want to be too radical and overthrow the government of Pennsylvania. It seems you will have to seek new means of moving delegates in the Congress and members of Pennsylvania Assembly toward independence. Okay, so that didn't help us much at all. South Carolina is moving a little bit our direction, but mm, 
This is tough. We might not be able to get this just goes to show you how precarious all of this was. It wasn't like it was this mass movement toward independence that everybody was behind. The country, the states, the colonies were very fractured in how they felt about all of this. Disaster for the coalition. News has arrived in Philadelphia that an act of parliament has enacted that would establish a royal peace commission made up of commissioners with the task of negotiating an end to the hostilities. So, yeah, the, the whole peace thing, it ended up being um, the general and admiral Howe, who uh, were put in command of the, the army and navy in North America. They were brothers. They, um, they actually end up uh, with limited powers of negotiating, including being able to give pardons. And they meet with John Adams, Ben Franklin, and others, uh, who basically say, this is crazy. We haven't done anything that we need to be pardoned for. And it really goes nowhere at all. Uh, the king is the author of all of our miseries. He offers peace with one hand and cuts us down with the other. This Congress will accept no peace without independence. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Well, my oratory is not winning me any friends right now. Uh, the moderates definitely didn't like it. Looks like we pushed New York back toward anti-independency. Yeah, boy, we're going to need a game changer of some kind here. Uh, you have mail. Oh, I haven't been reading my mail. Oh, boy, I should have been doing that. I didn't realize that was a thing on this one. It's loading very slowly. Let's open our mail. From Abigail. Oh, do I have to actually send her mail? From Ab Oh, I've got three letters from her. My goodness. Uh, wow. Wow. I'm not going to read all of that. Johnny, Nabby, and Charles, that's their kids. Nabby, her name was Abigail, uh, very sadly died of uh, breast cancer later in life. And uh, that's all depicted in the TV show John Adams, which I highly recommend, by the way. It's phenomenal television. It's really quite accurate to the real history, so much so that when I went to John Adams' house, uh, I immediately recognized things because the TV show like has little details of what his house looked like down perfectly. Uh, it's really cool to tour the houses, by the way. Um, so there's not a lot here. Send me a choir of paper, or I know not whether I shall be able to write you another letter. We cannot get any here. Pleurisy fever prevails and is very mortal. We have lost three grown persons in this town. Uh, oh boy, am I going to have to send her a letter in return to get her to keep writing? I am charmed with the sentiments of common sense and wonder how an honest heart, one who wishes the welfare of their country and the happiness of posterity, can hesitate one moment at adopting them. I want to know how these sentiments are received in Congress. Um, interesting. So I wonder if these are actual letters that she wrote, because they wrote a ton of letters to each other. This is really cool just to kind of immerse you in all of this. But I want to keep the story moving for our sake. Um, I'm not going to send her anything right now. Uh, three days after the reconciliationist elation at the news of the Royal Peace Commission's formation, their celebrations died out in an instant. Further news has arrived in Philadelphia that the king has hired thousands of foreign mercenaries as the Hessians. we got to remember that the king is German. His great-grandfather and his grandfather, George I and George II, were actually born in Germany and spoke German as their first language. George III is the first member of his dynasty for whom English was his first language. Uh, let's see. Is this the king whose tender mercy you have spoken of, Mr. Dickinson? Uh... So I'm going to go with the more moderate stance on this one. Such dignified language will speak to the sore hearts of the reconciliationists, but inspires raised eyebrows in most of your allies in the Congress. Okay. Um, mm, boy, nothing's really moving. It's really those two states I'm worried about the most. All right. The instruction procedure mandates that all congressmen follow the instructions of their state governments on important measures such as independence. Served as a roadblock to your faction, you have long considered the removal of the mandate, but thought it a measure too radical until now. You introduced to Congress which of the following resolves. 
Uh, Congress has granted full powers to concert, direct, and other and order such further measures as may seem necessary for the defense and preservation, support, and establishment of right and liberty in the colonies. Um, mm, I think I'll go with the first one that's not quite so radical. Oh, so I guess I was too radical after all. It fails just as you assumed it would, and you put up a more focused resolve as a result that appears easier to pass. Okay. Uh, you prepare for another debate with Dickinson, this time of the greatest magnitude. Or not. To the surprise of you and Sam, Dickinson has relented on the instruction issue. It takes a moment for you to understand what he's playing at, but Sam eventually deciphers his motives. He intends to present the proclamation to the fracturing citizenry of Pennsylvania as evidence that Congress recognizes the state's government as a functioning model for other, other colonies. A cunning maneuver. What's your play? Uh, uh, the preamble. So the preamble, if we're talking about the preamble to the actual Declaration for Independence... It's basically when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for, basically they're saying, listen, we've gotten to the place where it has become necessary for us to declare independence, and we're going to list all the reasons why. So it was it was pretty downplayed. It wasn't really radical. Um, A conciliatory, uh, conciliatory uh, Tory declaration laying out the full motives. I don't think we're talking about the Declaration of Independence here, but I'm going to go moderate again. It's exactly what Dickinson was hoping you would do, and it lends further credence to his argument. If your intention was to bolster the legitimacy of his Pennsylvania government, good job. I am failing miserably right now in all of this. Uh, they're actually more pro or anti-independence than ever. Okay, uh, James Wilson of Pennsylvania points out in his quiet, measured way, before we build a new house, we should pull down the old one and expose ourselves to the inclem inclemencies of the seasons. You heard the seasons parable 12 times from Mr. Wilson, and its repetition wears on you. Um, defend of the defense of the preamble and reasons it is necessary to act against the cruel actions of the king. It's a legitimacy to the body and reasons to be are undeniable. You repeat the same points of the preamble with its expectant supporters and detractors. When the vote comes late in the afternoon, the resolve and preamble pass seven to five. Duane asserts that you have created a machine for the fabrication of independence. You pause before responding with confidence that this measure is independence. All right. James Wilson is John Dickinson's most ardent apprentice in this Congress and an astute general conservative, according to all. He understands that the threat of invasion palpable, the strong winds of change are at the back of the Liberty Party and secretly meets with you and Samuel to barter for his vote. What can we do to convince him? Uh... I should probably rely on Dr. Franklin. Yeah, let's rely on Franklin. Wilson deals chiefly in theoreticals and does not find Mr. Franklin's argument particularly persuasive. Ugh. Man, I am just losing all over the place. Over the course of the Congress, the impromptu alliance between yourself and the Lee brothers of Virginia has only grown stronger. Uh, at one time, you despised John Hancock for his association with slavers. Now your movement is beholden to the sons of tobacco empires who come to Philadelphia attended by human chattel and dazzling livery. Um, Lee Mao, something about slavery. What will you say in response? Uh, Why discuss the topic that divides us when there's so much that binds us as one? Let's go there. The choice not to comment on a divisive issue is an odd one for John Adams, but you are in sensitive company after all. The night continues in blissful merriness, tended to by chattel men. It, 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 I know it feels dirty to do that, but that was the reality that they were facing. If they'd have been hardcore on the slavery issue, independence never would have happened. Um, uh, 
We're almost halfway, well, we are halfway there. Pennsylvania is not the only province being rocked by political upheaval. James Warren of Massachusetts deals with an insurgent group of Massachusetts farmers. Uh, Encourage him. Yeah, we'll encourage him. Warren is encouraged by your letter, especially your beliefs regarding the maintenance of order, tradition, and social hierarchy. He cannot free himself from the populistic pestilence that embarrasses you in Philadelphia, but he will work to stabilize the government. I'm not worried about New England. That is not where our problem is at all. New York's still close. North Carolina was the first colony to inquire about your beliefs on the formation of a government in January. Now George Wythe of Virginia applies your thoughts applies for your thoughts on the restructuring of his state's government and the priorities any government must uphold. Um, liberal education, a firm militia, and society bound to order. Yeah, this sounds like something that John Adams actually said, You and I, dear friend, have been set into life at a time when the greatest lawmakers of antiquity would have wished to live. How few of the human race have had the opportunity to make for themselves elections for the governments of themselves and their offspring. Rejoice in the freedom of mankind and may your new government protect it. That's kind of, that sounds John Adams y to me. This is a surprisingly populistic tone, the sort of language one would expect Sam Adams to parrot, not John. This will prove a radicalizing influence on the actions of Wythe. Meanwhile, your letter circulated as thoughts on government to little of the same fanfare as Payne's pamphlet. Yeah, that's true. But how did that affect Virginia? It looks like we moved North Carolina a little closer. We're getting nowhere with Pennsylvania and South Carolina, though. Encouraged by your thoughts on government, Patrick Henry has written to Virginia's Whigs to advocate your positions. Most scandalously, in his letter, he has referred to you as a Democrat. That name comes with dangerous implications. Is it true you intend for the unpropertied to vote? <gasps> for shame. That is the question of the peoples of Virginia and other colonies must determine in establishing their new governments. So here's where it gets tricky because I could appeal to kind of the populist idea that everybody should decide for themselves, but that's probably going to anger some of the people who are in position to make decisions about what their government does. Um, I do not support the right of any man to vote. Uh, the magnitude of change of this continent is the most magnificent melody of history. That I am convinced of. If the union that is to come is to survive the trouble of politics... It must embrace a model wherein all men may participate. I'm going to say, let states decide. You are not one to keep your opinion to yourself on matters, and your allies wonder whatever you could be meaning. Yeah, I guess I'm not doing myself any favors by kind of being on the fence about some of this stuff. Ugh. Just can't seem to move these guys. Here we go. Since his return, he's been trying a plethora of solutions to his political woes, yet the government's Government he's curated here in Pennsylvania increasingly slips through his fingers, but the cause of independency has not slowed. Richard Henry Lee has just introduced the most important resolve thus far that these colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. A despondent Dickinson watches as you rise to speak in the motion's favor. Second, your move, Dickinson. Uh, second, it is time to move without pause toward the divine goal of liberty. Uh, yeah. The full extent of Mr. Lee's resolve weighs down each man in the Congress in equal part. Dickinson paces the steps of the State House to oversee the debates in both the Assembly and the Congress. Okay. Still 65% in Pennsylvania. Okay. They're battered but not intimidated. Rutledge of South Carolina states his case on a different basis. Independency, he claims, would prevent the Congress from finding foreign allies instead of in, in aiding, that, aiding that endeavor. How do you respond? I disagree. Um, we must find support from another foreign, sovereign power or we could be cut down where we stand. Mr. Rutledge could not be more wrong in his assertion. On the contrary, sir, we must accept independency if we hope for any opportunity of relief. Yeah, I agree with that. 
You might have a point, but Rutledge and the other reconciliationists certainly don't think so, excluding Dickinson, Dickinson, who is considering every plausible path to slow the independence movement. As you get caught on the alliances question, he wins this battle, and the vote for Lee's resolve is postponed to July 1st, but you're gaining ground. Am I, though? Who am I gaining ground with? Dr. Franklin has advocated the pursuit of an alliance with France, whilst others have spoken positively of a similar arrangement with the Spanish. Which sovereign power, in your view, would be the most sensible partner for the revolution? Uh, we could send Dr. Franklin, which is actually what ended up happening. Um, we, could, we should seek an alliance with any nation that will support us against Britain. I don't think I'd go that far. The prospect of an alliance with France throws Duane into a fit, but this is certainly in line with the thoughts of much of the Congress, especially those in the South. All right. All right. We, we bumped the South a little bit. Still a long way from getting it, though. With legislative conventions ongoing in New Jersey and Delaware, your faction could have a significant effect in winning the favor of either, but you may only have the muster to effectively influence one of the two. I feel like Pennsylvania is probably where we got to focus. We've already got New Jersey just barely. The The royal governor of New Jersey, by the way, uh, was Benjamin Franklin's son, William. Um, Pennsylvania is the one that ne needs the most movement. Uh... And we'll go after all of them, I guess. As you have said, remember, you can't make 13 clocks strike precisely alike at the same second. Uh, I don't know. While Philadelphia moves swiftly toward independence, it is crucial that all 13 colonies move toward this noble goal in unison. No defections can be endured. That is why the news you have just received indicating Maryland has yet to free up their delegates to support independency is so troubling. What can you do to convince Maryland? I could send Sam. Write to the Patriots. All right, I'll write to them. You're not the best suited to write to the Patriots of Maryland, but they are encouraged by the privilege of your prodding. Let's hope they deliver before, before the time of the vote. Doesn't look like it at the moment. If America is to break off from Great Britain... Uh, all right, so yeah, Thomas Jefferson's the only choice. Uh, there was a committee of five that was chosen to come up with a uh, declaration of their causes uh, for independence. Franklin, Adams, Jefferson are all part of it. That should help with getting Virginia on board, but I just don't think we're going to have the votes here. Rumors persist throughout the colonies that British ships amass on the eastern shores in preparation for invasion. Absolutely true. Uh, we must all rise up. Um, put our trust in Washington. You are the general's strongest advocate and relies on your trust. This is a good message. All right, we're taking on Dickinson again. We've only got eight turns left. I just I feel like we're not going to get it. I am single-handedly bringing down the cause of American independence. Uh, so we're debating with Dickinson. He, he ends by prophesying in a shaky yet determined voice that after all this turmoil, we will crawl back under the aegis of the king, but he will only recognize us as slaves, a conquered people. Which of these notions will you attack in your rebuttal? Uh I attack the idea that independence would invite foreign invasion. On the contrary, independence is the only way to ensure that this country can establish lucrative bonds and alliances with the other powers of the world. Uh, it would have been pr preferable to let Dickinson's fear-mongering stand on its own. Addressing the issue has bolstered it, and Rutledge and Duane rave about the issue in the coming hours until the time of the vote arrives. Ugh, yeah. I mean, it's getting closer, but it's just not going to happen. Independence, Confederation, and Foreign Alliances. For the previous year, such talk was scorned by the majority of the Congress. The vote clearly will not be unanimous. What will your chosen course be to ensure the, the floor vote is? Uh, I 
Only together can we repel the British and forge future generations of Eden and liberty. Interesting. While the smaller colonies shunned the prospect, Pennsylvania and New York would be just as much amicable to a compact in which they were afforded great power as Virginia. Uh, man, we're only going to get half the states, aren't we? First draft of De Jefferson's declaration is complete. You and Dr. Franklin are the first of the committee granted responsibility of re revision. It's a task Dr. Franklin will find most appealing, nitpicking what is to be Mr. Jefferson's most crucial work. Uh, the draft you read is incredible. Um, I will defend it every word, which is basically what Adam's argument was. He he told him, he said, you know, I mean, I, I probably would have worded some of this stuff differently, but I will defend every word of it. Adams was very much in support of what he wrote. Uh, I'll just say incredible, defend every word. Dr. Franklin is less inclined to do so and will advocate practical revisions, which he did. There were some minor things, um, just little wording changes that made, like uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident, which is something that ended up being in it. But originally, Jefferson wrote, we hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable. And they changed it to self-evident. Stuff like that. More broadly, Dr. Franklin has taken issue with the lack of succinctness and repetition of much of Jefferson's words. Oh, there we go. Um, sacred and undeniable. I, I was just saying that. I didn't even realize that was on the screen. Uh you know what? I, I'm just going to err on the side of what actually ended up happening in these cases. Jefferson watches in quiet disgust. As you, that's okay, Jefferson. I'm, I'm not a fan of yours. Brilliant document that he wrote, but that's all I'll really say good about Thomas Jefferson. Uh, okay. How we doing? Any better? Not a bit. Not a bit. One of the more scandalous charges levied against the king in the document is that he has waged cruel war against human nature itself by the transportation of persons of a distant people who never offended him, captivating and carrying them into slavery. Such a declaration would be deafening and puts the alliance at grave risk of fracture. Dr. Franklin prefers the entire paragraph to be removed. Yeah, we have to... We have to go with that, unfortunately. We might get North Carolina and New York, maybe, but that's about all we're going to get. Uh, all men are created equal. What does that mean exactly? Divine right of all mankind to be free and independent persons as God has intended them to be. Uh, I'm going to go with the third one for, for the co colonies to declare themselves as a sovereign nation. This will... Ease the worries of the slaver class. Yeah. Mm, we're getting closer, but not quite there. Uh, Benjamin Harrison V, who is the father of future President William Henry Harrison and the great-grandfather of Benjamin Harrison, the president, uh, has had his way with suggesting alterations, but otherwise awaits the time it pr to present it to the Congress. Uh Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is a strange perversion of the old revolutionary slogan. Now, I'll let Franklin and Harrison look it over independently in another time. During your lunch, you and Jefferson debate the intricacies of government and nature. Though you two differ on just about everything, absolutely true. Uh, so Jefferson and Adams, they're fascinating history. Uh, they're friends for a while. They end up serving overseas together in Europe as ambassadors. Uh, then Adams ends up president. When, or vice president when Jefferson is secretary of state, then Adams is president and Jefferson's vice president, and then Jefferson defeats Adams and becomes president, and they have a big falling out. Uh, but then through the work of men like ben, Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was a signer of the Declaration himself, uh, they are able to work things out, and for the last decade or so of their lives, they write these incredible letters back and forth to each other, some of the most beautiful letters uh, in the early part of our history. Uh, so... How has that helped us at all? Nothing's really changing. We've only got two more questions. We are not going to make this happen. Dickinson is pale as death as the vote for independence looms. Whether this body will take that momentous step forward or die separated, the delegation of the state of South Carolina continues to dissent. 
So Rutledge basically ends up saying, if you can assure that we'll get all the other colonies, then we will support it as well. But I can't promise it, unfortunately. Um, For the liberty of all people, do not obstruct us. This is a motive justification and one that fails to sway Rutledge. You will not carry South Carolina in the vote. Yeah. The poor outside is intermixed with the echoing of thunder of history. Yeah. The time has been given for the whole people maturely to consider the great question of independence and ripen their judgments. Um, Seek out Dwayne now. Just go with that one. You delivered an impassioned speech about the necessities of independence. July 2nd, you say, will be marked in the memory of generations of mankind to come as a date immemorial. And that's absolutely true. He wrote that in a letter to Abigail talking about how July 2nd will be celebrated with fireworks and parades and all this stuff. Because that was the day that they adopted uh, the declaration. And I think it was July 4th when they adopted the final wording or July one one or the other one of one of those days was the day they adopted the final wording the other way one was when they adopted the actual motion uh, of course they didn't sign it until august because they they ordered an embossed copy of it and it took time for that to be created and then most of them signed it at the beginning of august yeah didn't happen election night has arrived we're gonna get like six states brutal Oh, we have to click on the states to view the results. What are we waiting on here? All right, we'll just go to final results. We got seven, four, and six against. (laughs) I failed miserably. All right, well, at least we know what not to do. But uh, I hope you enjoyed that. That was just a, a kind of a fun look at history and all that went into things. We, you know, we tend to think of these things with broad strokes and we don't think of the little details and the machinations and the behind the scenes and the negotiating that had to take place and the back and forth and uh, the uh, compromises and the people that whose names we've never heard of who were involved in all of this to make something like this happen. Uh, So if you have a particular one of these campaigns you'd like me to check out and do, let me know in the comment section below. Check out some of the other ones that we've done in the past. Hope you enjoy those things. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.